What's going on, everybody? It's Los here. We back on the throne of positivity where the first is last and the last is first. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these upcoming videos. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel financially and then just also supporting through prayers and action by liking or commenting down below. I appreciate every single one of you guys. It's always awesome when you ask people to do stuff and then they do it. I've been seeing a lot of more engagement with our videos and content that it makes me feel good that you guys are actually partnering with the vision of throne of positivity and wanting to see the gospel grow throughout the kingdom so today i want to talk about the topic of spiritual warfare and another weapon that we don't consider to be a weapon and actually i think it's probably the most important weapon that we possess because it's what deals with us personally so God created us in his sovereignty. He created us in his image. God is a free will being. He does whatever he wants. He is perfect and righteous, holy and majestic in all of his ways. No wickedness, nor darkness, nor variation of change can be found in him. However, we are creatures that are fallible, meaning that we are capable of error. So we have the ability to choose the same way he has the ability to choose. So what does that mean? There is a weapon that you probably don't even consider, and that is of obedience. I don't think maybe you can add to this conversation of what you think could also be greater than this, but I don't know if there's anything more powerful than obedience. Because if we think about everything else, right? Prayer, praise, worship, reading the word, fasting, submission, sacrifice, whatever it may be, all of that stems from one single thing, and that is obedience. Because if we say prayer, Jesus taught us how to pray. If we say fasting, the Bible shows us how to fast. Whatever we say that it is, it's coming from some type of directive from God in the first place. And every video, I'm always seeking the lord like father i don't want to come up with my own ideas i don't want to just talk about the things that i want to talk about what is it that you want to tell your people and i had several ideas throughout the week that i'm like is it this lord is it this go in the toolbox is it this and it's like no 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 until finally i felt like god told me this whatever it is that you are going through that process of God in your life is going to be a testimony of the impossible that he can accomplish. I don't know what you're going through. I don't even know what you're facing. I can't even imagine. But I know that I'm not alone in my sufferings. I know that the pain that I experience is so great, but I'm not alone. That means that you're experiencing these things and the saints around the world are experiencing these things. Therefore, I can speak to what I believe that God is saying to you in this moment. And that is this process has a purpose and it will be to show people the impossible can be done through him and him alone. But what is that going to require? It's going to require that obedience that we're talking about. Now, why is obedience so important? We all have desires, we all have dreams, visions, ideas for our lives, and we can choose to follow those things. You have every right as that being created in the sovereign image of God to do what you want to do. However, we must always recognize that our actions always have consequences. And perhaps God has asked you something in this season that you probably don't want to let go. And it's time to let go. It's time to trust in God beyond just the scene and completely leave it in his hands. Whatever directive God has asked you, you got to understand that obedience is always sacrifice and it will be against your flesh. It's going to hurt. And possibly, like me, God multiple times has asked me, season after season it seems like something greater and greater until finally it's like lord i believe in you so greatly i trust in you so greatly that i'm willing to just leave it all in your hands and if it's truly of you lord then this thing shall be built up if it's truly of you father then 
what is going to happen. Nothing can stop it. No devil can destroy what you have built up. There's no walls in Jericho high enough to stop the purpose and command for God's plan in your life. But when God asks us to do something, it hurts. It really hurts. When I consider the call that God made on my life to come to San Diego, it cost me everything, but it didn't hurt as much because what did God do if not put the promise before my eyes and my heart? Like the thing that I desire, he showed me like he showed Abraham the stars in the sky. So for me, it was like, all right, let's go. Obedience. But that obedience will always come at a cost because the cost is even paid to this day where I'm like, Father, I'm looking around and I still don't see what you promised me. But we have to continue forward and we have to have faith in the Lord that he is faithful to complete his promises. If you've been following me on social media, I've talked about this with Abraham and with Sarah. Oftentimes we look at Abraham for his great and mighty faith, which I'm about to reference him in a second. So we'll get there. But Sarah's faith is something that we often overlook. We often overlook the faith of many women in the Bible, which as men, if you're a man watching this, we need to look at the women of the faith. Because although we're strong, burly, and brutish, and we can overcome by the strength of our might, women have a specific calling to the Lord. I think God's ear is attuned to the righteous, and our prayers avail us much. But when it comes to a woman calling to God, I think it's a different type of answer. The same way that our ears would be attuned to the women in our life, right? If my mother calls me, I'm like, okay, my sisters, hello? Or, and my wife especially, my heart is opening up. So imagine how much more Christ to his bride and then God to his daughters, right? Like, it, it's powerful. So the Bible in Hebrews 11, 11 says that by faith, Sarah received the power to conceive. And through her, the descendancy of the fulfillment of the promise of Abraham came to pass. That's something powerful to consider. He who promised is faithful, and she considered him faithful who promised. So when God is asking us to do something, yeah, initially we may laugh at it, right? That the way that she did, but we must understand the importance of obedience is found in the parable of the two sons or the two servants, where it's Jesus saying, I told one person to do this. They said they would do it, but eventually they didn't do it. And then I told the other one, do it. They didn't do it initially, but eventually they did it. Which of the two completed the will of the father? It was the second one. So Sarah was in the same position in that she considered her body and she was like, God is going to give me a child at my old age. I'm advanced in my years and my womb is closed. I'm barren. She laughed at the prospect. But what did she ultimately do? Abraham is not a man on his own. He doesn't stand on his own two feet. It's Abraham and Sarah. But the reason why Abraham is always put at the forefront is because men are the ones who are always called to account. If disobedience is taking place in the household of Abraham, yeah, the ones who are disobedient in the household are going to deal with it. But the one called to account is Abraham, not the household. That's the importance that we must understand. That's why there's this structure and order of obedience, of submission within the home and the church. And ultimately, it should be in the society where it's not men and women. And then it's this unequal thing. No, it's an equal yoke. But there's one who is called to account. And that's men. So as men, if we look to the women of our lives, we can see great feats and acts of obedience. And we should draw inspiration from them so that we may learn how to be obedient. Because I can't take credit for the obedience in my life when I say, you know, I was obedient to obey God to go from Florida to San Diego. The reason why I was able to take that leap is because I'm built on the shoulders of the giants that came before me. My family didn't serve God. Most of them don't still. But my grandmother has been the pillar upon which God has built our faith. And even though I didn't grow up in the church, I witnessed her faithfulness and obedience to God to a level that when the calling came upon my life, I was able to answer without reservation. And that's because of the example that I saw in a woman of faith who decided, I will live for God. 
And one thing that we must always understand is that obedience pays dividends that disobedience would never. Hannah is another woman of the faith that she went and she was crying in the temple of the Lord, begging God, open and restore my womb that I may give birth to a child. And if you do, I swear to dedicate this child to your service all the days of his life. But what does her vow have to do with obedience? Because sometimes obedience is tested not in the process, but in the result. Hannah's obedience was proven not leading up to the birth, but after the birth. And the Bible talks about how she went and gave her child up to Eli, to the service of the temple, to serve God all his days. And because of that, who do we have this day? We have a Samuel that was the judge over all of Israel, a man who was separated for the service of God. And every year she went and gave sacrifice and made sure he was clothed and taken care of. That's obedience. The test is before the birth, but then it's also after. What are the covenants and the vows you have made to God? And will you repay the Lord his vows? So what does obedience actually look like? Obedience is an interesting thing because I've explained this on live several times. Obedience is always sacrifice, but sacrifice isn't always obedience. How can that be? Because obedience is a law of the spirit. And the Bible talks about in the book of Romans that the spirit gratifies the desires of God ultimately because it's only the spirit that knows the heart and desires and thoughts of God. So obedience is connected to the spirit in that way. However, sacrifice is self-seeking, is not necessarily connected to the spirit. That's why you could go to church and never experience God. You could read the word of God and never receive revelation. You could do whatever you want religious wise and you'll never know God and he doesn't know you. But obedience is where all the blessing is because it is in obedience that we humble ourselves before God. And in that humility, the other weapon of warfare that we talked about in the previous video draws us closer to God. Because he who humbles himself before God is drawn closer to God. But he who is proud is humbled, but they're not exalted. They're brought low and the humble are exalted. So obedience requires great humility to say that, Lord, I'm going to trust you for the directive you're giving me for my life. I may not understand it. It may hurt me to let go and trust these things into your hands that you may build up my house. But wisdom comes at a cost. Obedience always costs us something. But in that cost that's paid up front, in the long run, it'll come back with interest. But the pleasures of sin, the payment is deferred. And in the long run, you will pay far greater than you could ever imagine. And if obedience draws us closer to God, what does that mean for our spiritual warfare? If obedience brings us into the presence and the shadow of the Almighty, and he is the one that fights our battles, then what does fighting really look like in the kingdom of heaven? Obedience. It looks like humility. It is not by strength nor by might, but by his grace, O oh God, shall we overcome. So in the world where I would fight by literally fighting or whatever tactics or manipulations or deceptions we can come up with our plans and devices, but in the kingdom of God, obedience, surrender, humility and trusting the Lord is how we truly fight our battles. Obviously, we're worshiping with praise. And if we are able to do that, it'll draw us closer. So again, whatever God is asking you for in this season, just do it. It's not to say that you can't question it. Question God on the route to obedience while walking in that. Let the word of God be the lamp to your feet and understand that not all your questions will be answered. But God one day promises to give you the understanding. You may not know why relationships are cut off or friendships ceased or why did things go this way or how come we're going through the same situation again, Lord? Like it hurts. The lack of understanding is uncomfortable. But if you can trust God and continue to move forward, you'll be in a place where Abraham truly was. What most people don't really understand about God showing Abraham the stars, and he said, count them and you shall know, is that God didn't tell Abraham that at night when he saw all the stars, he showed him that in the daytime. And you see that played out in the narrative in like a chapter or two afterward. God showed Abraham in the daytime 
And he said, look at the stars. And if you can number them, so shall my promise be in your life. Why did God choose to do that? Because we must walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we walk by faith, we will gratify the desires of the spirit. We will be connected to God and ultimately fulfill his desire. So the last thing that I want to say in regard to encouraging you to obey is simply this. I want to ask you, trust the Lord in leaving everything in his hands. Trust in God for whatever he asked you to do, even if it doesn't make sense. Even if you think it's going to hurt other people, don't worry about them. Not in the sense that you don't care about them, but God asked you to do something, walk it out because he's in charge of them too. And he'll take care of those people, your family, your friends, your spouse, your children, whatever it is that you are concerned about. Ultimately, if you don't let go, then you don't trust. So if you can release these things into the hands of God, then what will happen? He's going to take you where you need to be so that ultimately you may receive what he has for you. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and recognize that the blessing is not the blessing. The blessed one is the true blessing. I think the reason why God knocks us down time and time again, humbles us more and more, is to show us the unreliability of the world, the possessions, and of people, not in a harsh way, that you can't trust anybody, not like that, but that you can ultimately recognize, I trust him. He's the only reliable one in this world. And if he's the only one reliable, when he tells me to trust this person or to do this or to sacrifice this or to let go of this, then ultimately I will be able to do it. Why? Because he's the one that we know that we can rely on through the darkness, the pain, and the turmoil. So beloved, I hope that this video encourages you to continue to trust in the Lord and to walk out in obedience so that you could really recognize what that weapon is truly like. And as you learn to yield it, it'll lead you to other blessings. So y'all yeah, know what it is. It's Lowe's here. We on the throne of positivity where nobody shall dethrone us. We out. Peace.